Well, Mishawaka, it's Decision 2016! And I'm not talking Hillary or Trump, thank goodness, but Election Day is upon us. And we have to go to the polls very soon and make a pretty big decision in regards to the future of our schools here in Mishawaka versus our pocketbook. Which one's going to win? It's Referendum 2.0 and the things you need to know, according to me. Let's go. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect place But not according to me We hold these truths to be All men they are created equally But not according to me I'm just a common sense average American dude I'm Father of four, I'm a husband to my wife And that's according to me As I record this, we are just a few weeks away from Election Day. And I don't care what your thoughts and opinions are in regards to the election. I want this person to win. No, this person needs to win. I am tired of all of it. (laughs) A couple of weeks can't come soon enough in regards to this political season that we're in. Because I have political fatigue and I'm probably speaking for you as well. But here in Mishawaka, we have more than just a president or a governor, or a representative, or even judges to vote for and elect this time around. We're once again faced with a pretty important question. Once again faced with a decision that we, as residents of the town, as homeowners especially of Mishawaka, need to decide. And that is, do we want to approve additional taxes on our property taxes To help the school city of Mishawaka. That's what's being proposed right now. And for the next 15 minutes or so, I wanted to share with you my thoughts and opinions on it. And also share with you some information, some facts, some things you need to know. In hopes that it puts you in a better position to make an educated decision on the future of the schools here in our town. And to make a better educated decision involving your pocketbook, because that's what it's going to boil down to. And I also think it's important for you to know a little background about me. My name is Jason E. Wilkins. And I have four children. My wife and I have three children that attend schools right here in the school city of Mishawaka. And the fourth one's too young to go to school yet, but soon she'll be going too. So look out, four DeWilkinses are going to be going to a school near you in Mishawaka. Buckle up. Um, but I'm not a school board member. I don't work for the school city of Mishawaka. I'm a dad. And a homeowner. And a taxpayer. That's it. That's all I am. And we've been down this road before, folks. I mean, in 2013, three years ago, we were asked the same thing. Hey, uh, can you approve this referendum because uh, it'll help the school city of Mishawaka really close a pretty big financial gap that's not only now, but in the future is going to be even worse. Can you help us out with that? And this community voted no. Obviously, or we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And a lot of people don't know this. But I think it's important for you to know this, hearing this, whether you know me or you've never heard my voice before, that I voted no as well. And many people may not know that. But I want to be honest. I want to be transparent. And I'll tell you why. And more importantly, what I'm doing about it this time around. Because one of the main reasons I voted no, and that's really the main purpose of me talking to you about this right now, is I didn't know all the stuff I needed to know about it. I made some assumptions. 
And you know what they say when you assume, right? Well, that's what I did. And it's real easy to do that. You know, maybe you, you catch a real quick news article or you you see on the news for 30 seconds that, you know, the people here locally want more money from me. And, oh, geez, man, isn't that isn't my money enough? My goodness, you need more, you want more. And so you make a decision based on that without really knowing all of the background. I did not know everything I needed to know three years ago. And I apologize for that. Um, and... I know a lot more now, but I think it's important if you're like me and I'm nothing special, I want to share with you what I've come to find out about the situation, but I think it's important to not necessarily talk about what's going on right now, but how did we get here? Because to me, that opens up your eyes to the bigger picture of what's going on. There are really two main reasons why the school city of Mishawaka is in the financial situation it's in right now. And one of the main reasons is a decision that was made 50 years ago. And that decision 50 years ago was in regards to what the boundaries of, quote unquote, the school city of Mishawaka was going to be in the first place. Now, it'd be real easy to pile on and say, well, you know, why Why did they make it is what they did? Well, at the time, go back 50 years ago. A, there was still a desire even then to not have transportation, but instead to have local neighborhood schools here in school city of Mishawaka, a school you could walk to. And that's still true to this day. But on top of that, Rewind time 50 years ago and think about what Mishawaka was like then versus what it is now. Think of what downtown Mishawaka was then in the industry in that area and the south side of Mishawaka then versus now. Because one of the mistakes I made when I was all up in arms and go, how does Mishawaka not have any money? Are you kidding me? I mean, look at all the stuff on Grape Road and Main Street. Folks, I have news for you. That's all Penn Harris. All of it. I didn't know that. Shame on me. It's easy to assume it's in Mishawaka, right? Well, doesn't matter. That goes to Penn. Well, why? Well, because that's Penn's district. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Maybe you're right, but guess what? That was the decision that was made 50 years ago. Now, let me ask you something. You think Penn Harris is going to want to change that anytime soon? Of course not. Why would they? I wouldn't. (laughs) And so you're in a situation now to where when you think of University Park Mall, you think of AM General, you think of the Elm Road Medical Campus just south of the bypass here, you think of WSBT, you think of St. Joe Hospital, you think of all of the things along Mishawaka and all of those things I just named go to Penn Harris. All of that tax revenue, that whole area goes to Penn Harris. So let me name some exciting things inside the school city of Mishawaka. We have Bayer, well, that's good. Well, we'll take that. You know, Bayer Healthcare, that's a good thing. Uh, oh, Town and Country Shopping Center. Whoo! Thank goodness we still get that one. And Nylon Craft. I mean, those are your big players, <laughs> industry-wise, in the school city of Mishawaka. The rest of it, for the most part, is some commercial business in downtown uh, Mishawaka. Don't get me wrong. But the majority of it is residential. And when you look at what the average value of property is for somebody in the school city of Mishawaka, it's $145,000 of property per student is what it breaks down to. One hundred and forty five dollars per student here in Mishawaka. Conversely, you have $228,000 of property per student in Penn Harris, Madison. By the way, 24% of Penn Harris Madison's funding comes from Mishawaka addresses. Okay? So say what you want, but the money's going there, not here. $145,000 in value of property is the 11th lowest in the state. Strangely enough, South Bend has $211,000 of property value. 
Now, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and that, how well that worked for South Bend. Point taken. You're right. It doesn't necessarily mean that a whole bunch of money is going to make you have a better school. It doesn't. Point taken. But at the same time, when you talk about at least attempting to level the playing field to our neighbors just to the east of us, good luck with that. When you see that there's an $80,000 gap in property value per student just between PHM and Mishawaka alone, and you see, let's be real, the majority of the growth in Mishawaka industry and business-wise isn't in the school city of Mishawaka, you're never going to close that gap, unfortunately, without some sort of referendum. But I want to make this abundantly clear. The other reason I voted no in 2013 for the referendum, besides not knowing all the stuff I needed to know, which I just admitted I didn't know, I do now, is at that time, I had zero confidence in the superintendent. I had zero confidence in most of the school board. I had very little confidence in the leadership as a whole of the school city of Mishawaka. So to just give you 28 million bucks and say, all right, we'll do what you want to do with it. No, thank you. And I think I could speak for a lot of people in Mishawaka who felt and made that decision to vote no based on that and that alone. I can't say I blame you. Now, I do want to tell you what has really impressed me since then. Since then, we have a new superintendent who has an entirely positive and different direction for the school city of Mishawaka. We have a lot of new school board leadership, which is a welcome change. We also have a lot more transparency from the school city of Mishawaka with the citizens of our city. In fact, the referendum and a lot of the ideas and where this money is going to go to was from citizen groups who got together and said, what is it we would need to do to make things better for the schools here? It isn't just some pie-in-the-sky wish list. It's really not. In fact, if you've noticed some yard signs and you've noticed the slogan is we want you to vote yes twice for the referendum, what they mean by voting for it twice is the referendum is now split up into two different parts. The first part is for $1.8 million over the next seven years to cover operational expenses. And I want to explain that one. Because while it's easy to pile on former school board members and former leadership and former superintendents, and look, there was some mismanagement and some stupid decisions that were made as a school city, but but now that we know where the funds come from and where the state gets funding for public schools is from property taxes that have been capped, which is great for homeowners. But now that we know that, and now that we know that about 25% of addresses with Mishawaka on it Those taxes go to Penn Harris. (laughs) And now that we know that all the other stuff that we thought maybe is part of Mishawaka really isn't, and we know that most of the taxes now at this point are mainly residential and what's going on in downtown Mishawaka. I mean, even go back 20, 25 years. You factor in inflation, what the cost of things are. Do you think that amount of money is increased or decreased from the state? I think you know the answer to that. And so, again, while it's easy to pile on bad decisions made before, a lot of the money that you have and even extra money that you may have for fundraisers or for this or that and things that you wanted to spend money on for upkeep and maintenance, you've had to spend to keep the lights on. You've had to spend to keep teachers employed, to keep custodians and lunch servers and principals, assistant principals, coaches, you name it. I mean, just keeping these people on. It's not like you had a big old slush fund you can take from. And so when you see vote yes twice, and this is what I like about this 2016 approach to the referendum is the transparency. There's a novel idea because like we just talked about, the $1.8 million for seven years is to cover operating expenses, that gap that we just talked about just to keep the lights on, unfortunately, and to keep uh, things operational from a staffing standpoint. That's necessary. But then when you see vote yes twice, the second portion is for an additional $13 million for capital expenses. And so when we recreate the situation I just talked about of not really having much of a slush fund to be able to 
proactively get some things fixed that you think need to get fixed. And again, 